<laughs> oh, hi viewers. Guess what? I need to bring up something. The song that's playing right now. Um, so... I'm going to turn this up a little bit so that way I can hear it. Yeah, go, oh, so go for you, it. Magdalene. Yeah, Magdalene. It's very. It's one of the popular themes. Oh. That might be a little loud. Ooh. Yeah, I just wanted to hear it. No, nah, it's okay. So, I, one thing that, you know, on the channel that I'm huge with is music. And so it's like, I, I like this theme. It's a good theme. Also, I need that key in order to leave. So, you know, this is one of the most iconic scenes. It has the beautiful piano piece that everyone pretty much recognizes if you're huge into video game music and you you know you know the Silent Hill tracks. I forgot to talk about Promise Reprise. 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 Ha! Huh? Because that also happened and uh, that was playing with the scene with Angela. You know, it, how is how is that word pronounced? Reprise. I don't know. I always said reprise, but you know. I I'm, said reprise too, and then so confession from my still cringy days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm still cringy, but uh, MLP was. So I'm getting repres. Okay. So. Where, that might be it. Where is like a sound thing that I can listen to? My point is... Uh, That's going to drive me fucking insane. Well, she's the fact checker. I, I'm going to let her do the thing. Me, on the other hand, I'm, I'm, it's time to scavenge stuff and have a really long-winded, boring segment. Because this is the streets. For the, okay. most, for the most part, you can kind of just avoid everything. So it's a reprise or a freeze. Okay. I'm, I'm going to pronounce it reprise. Prize. That was. I'm getting a little bit of slow down. It's not even the game. It's just. Or no, it's the game. It's the game. That's what I was gonna say. It's not even the recording. It's, it's the game. Because there's so many enemies. It's trying to load right now. Yeah. Also, you know, my my PS3 is pretty old and not well taken care of. Nah, so. it's fine. It should be. It should be absolutely fine. Uh, something to note. You can loot rifle bullets. Or rifle shells. I, I guess is the correct pronunciation. Also, not so much lying figures. For the most part, we got bobblehead nurses that are just walking around. Fortunately, they're slower than zombies in Resident Evil, so you don't really have to pay too much attention. Just grab your stuff and get out. That, that's really all there is to this. I, I'm fine with that, to be perfectly honest, because, uh, I don't know, there's uh, is that something? I see something glimmering. It looks like a grabbable item. It is a grabbable item. Rifle shells, rifle shells. Let me tell you something, rifle sh Oh god, here it comes. Yeah, she, she likes us. <laughs> she, I think she likes us. So, I, I gotta be honest, as much as I recorded how much I scavenged, I'm willing to bet I missed a lot. Because, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to do when there's a lot to explore. Oh, uh, here we go. Health drink and eat, yep, shotgun shells. So basically, we're gonna be very well equipped to handling whatever comes our way. I, I don't think we're gonna have anything to worry about, to be perfectly honest. Also, I, I'm only gonna stick to like as much stuff as I can go to plan. Uh, if anyone's wondering what we really have to do, remember how we got that memo that said the letter and the wrench? Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, you do. Uh, that's that's our first goal. That's our first objective. The next thing we have to do is use the wrench to another objective that we will have to do. It's in the park. But my point is, it's going to be a long-winded, just really boring, just backtracking. So really, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to talk about, philosophy, James, Pyramid Head, uh, Eddie, Angela, Laura, I'm down with. So, well, let's Music. I, have, I have a I have a big book of philosophy here. We'll take something and see how if we can graph it onto the game. In yeah. Any way. Um, there there is one more theme that I have to bring up, but it's not going to happen until the very end or really close to it. Also, something else I should probably note: we got a new type of enemy. Um, I think these things are called mandarins. Basically, yeah, they they just like to climb the mesh grating. They have mouths for hands that look very, very seductive, provocative, and uh, I, I don't really want to say what they look like to me because I feel like that would be awkward for everyone here and you guys. That said, 
Because I'm not trying to make it awkward. I'm just trying to get through this whole section because it's boring as shit. It, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking bored. I mean, granted, I scavenge, and I have an OCD tendencies okay, to do that. I'm not seeing something I like in the philosophy. Okay. So what we're going to talk about is... I got questions if you want me to, if you want to bring up, sure, like... Sure, go ahead. Okay. So, my biggest question. And this one is related to the mirrored image of James and Pyramid Head. Okay. So, you got Pyramid Head, which is, like, I guess this weird uh, inversion of James. Although, it's, I guess it's supposed to be more... Rel- more uh, iconic because it's what James sees as himself. That's interesting. I hadn't actually considered that Pyramid Head is how James sees himself. Or at least it's either like this weird physical manifestation of James or it's. Well, I mean, what I would say is I believe it's. So you take James's sexual frustration. Right. Then you manifest it in Silent Hill and uh, basically it's his punishment to what he did. Gotcha. Uh, but it's uh, at the same time, I believe it's also how James kind of sees himself, the the monster, in other words, that, that that is James. But I got a lot of questions. First off, what the fuck is the symbolism with pyramid head? Like, why the triangle pyramid head? Why the leather apron? Why the giant knife? Why do you see him with spears sometimes? Okay, so I can actually answer some of that. Okay. The the sword, the giant sword, and the giant spear. Uh, could be symbolisms of male virility. Okay. Or fertility. Is it virility or fertility? I mean, the stabbing motion, I, I think I can pretty much agree with, because, I mean, it's... it's it, it can be virility. taken multiple ways. It is virility. But it, it's definitely, typically, anything that is gun, knife, or cylindrical weapon related is a dick reference. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious because you know, Pyramid Head, he's he's very rapey. Yeah. And I mean, I really have no better way to to say that. And I, I apologize if this gets a little heavy. I mean, uh, no, I, no, I feel fine. I feel like I, I at least owe that to someone who uh, who that might be some sort of trigger word because you know it's I'm not trying to offend anyone. Rape is a serious thing. I'm not trying to make fun of it, but you kind of no. have to address it when you no, talk it, about Pyramid Head uh, and James. Pyramid Head pretty much openly tried to rape or did rape a Yeah. Mannequin. I mean, so. you see it it's very awkward. Um, um also this is kind of giving us a clue what we need the wrench for. In the park at the foot of the praying woman beside the ground inside the box to open it. Okay. Yeah, that that's uh, really what we need. Um, so as for the leather apron, again, leather is associated with masculinity and warrior type thing. I also think the fact that he has left his... his I, I don't remember so much in the game. Does it fully cover his body or just his waist? Well, I mean, like, uh, I'm pretty sure it's his whole body. So it's his I whole mean, we'll body. get a picture later on that we can kind of just examine. Uh, it's actually coming up. It'll probably be in the next part. Um, for the triangle head, so that one... Is twofold. One, you have it disguising his identity, which kind of shows that James likes to think of that d- dark side of him as an other. Which makes sense. I mean, it's, it, it's, 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 it, it's kind of like him having to deal with his own uh, identity while at the same time not really wanting to. Yeah. Uh, and also having this, this this connection as I keep bringing up. Because, I mean, I feel like that that's a huge part of James's character. The fact that uh, he doesn't really associate himself as this monster, but rather he kind of is trying to uh, not think about it. In fact, he gets upset whenever he kind of has to be pulled back into it. Yeah. And it's as, not until the end where he really addresses it. As for the the triangle quality of it, that one I'm really I'm unsure of. I, I think that the massive size of it is meant to be imposing. Mm-hmm. But as for why it's a triangle, I don't know. I mean, that that is my biggest question. Like, is it supposed to represent some sort of prison? Like, it's it's James's prison, like, uh, or it's some sort of retribution? Like, this is his, re- this is how he's going to like pay his sin. Well, here's the here's the odd thing though is that, I mean, that's one interpretation. But at the same time, it's that head that makes him invulnerable. It is. So. I'm going the other way. The 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 head, I think, is has more significance to it. I just don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. I, I got kind of a more... Uh, I have a question. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm a little hesitant about asking it just because it's really... Uh, uncomfortable? Yeah, it's a very it's uncomfortable. Fine. Okay. 
Uh, so the fact that Pyramid Head tends to rape his victims right. uh, and kill them in the process. Right. Is it possible that there's some sort of association with James, or is it kind of the monster itself in kind in the sense that that's just a side effect of what he does as James's sexual frustration? I think that the rape. I think it, I, I don't think it is just necessarily a manifestation of James's frustration. I think perhaps. And I think you've said this that Pyramid Head is kind of a little is kind of how James sees himself, regardless of whether he wants to to face it or not. Yeah. And I think that perhaps because he does end up killing his victims after he's raping him, raping them, does that kind of cue into how he sees his relationship with Mary? Well, that's the question. I mean, it, it, it we're talking metaphor like metaphorically here, right? Yeah, like yeah. not literally. Like I, I don't think. No, James... no, I, I don't think James ever raped his wife. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, there's only one way I could see that, but at the same time, it's kind of a stretch. Yeah, I mean, he killed her, no doubt. Yeah, but like to associate maybe afterwards, it's kind of like. Uh, I don't think. So. Yeah. I mean, like I, I thought that's something that I thought about also. We're on the other side. I should probably explain this just before I get... There's a barrier right there, so that's why we had to make the long track. Gotcha. Okay, I apologize if there was a random cut. We, we were having some puppy problems, but My anyways... Dog does not know how to be quiet. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I, I'll, anyways, you were saying about Mary's death. Yeah, um, I think because Mary's death was so toxic and was so kind of a volatile time for them that James ended up associating everything about Mary's death and their relationship as kind of expanding it out farther from just the time of Mary's death into the rest of their relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, like, in a lot of ways, I think it was such a sensitive time also. And so, you know, Mary, being that she has this huge dilemma and having to come to terms with death, she started pushing away James. But at the same time, you know, she... She needed him to be there, and so it took a huge toll on James as a as an individual. I think, yeah, I definitely think there was some some, uh, oh, what's the word? Some difficulty balancing the two between her not wanting uh, him to see her because she was in such a horrible place. Yeah, and she also kind of like had a lot of, she she took a huge uh, self-esteem dive and saw herself as like you know gross and ugly yeah she's like i'm a monster but the thing is like james he became sexually frustrated because of this actually no i think there's also something to be said well no silent hill is a manifestation of james but also i think that given that mary is super not mary uh maria is super provocative mm -hmm. that that could say something to mary's um, insecurity about herself as well. Yeah, well, there is one thing I have to bring up, but we'll, we'll cover that later. Uh, much later. Because, you know, this this part, like, what is this, eight, nine? Uh, it doesn't matter. Point is, uh, Maria, Maria is kind of an interesting character. Not so much in this game, but, like, later on, she, she like, there's this one part that's kind of interesting i'll get to that later not the point point is you know james james is like a sexually frustrated character and it's like i never really understood it until like i played the game all the way through and like there's little hints in there and i feel like as we play it we'll kind of understand that yeah i actually almost think that the game could be said for him trying to find a balance between his rational side and his more um instinct driven side possibly mm -hmm. Anyways, so, not to cut it short, but at the same time, like, I, I feel like we kind of covered James pretty, pretty well in a lot of this. Uh, all I really need to say is, you know, we got this little thing, one of those little things that you can read, and also, you know, we got the lair and the wrench, and so obviously you go to the place and you dig this up, and what else? You're gonna, you're gonna find a thing where you need to use the wrench. It's what you do. Yes. Use the wrench. Also, I think I think we're gonna end it off pretty quickly because you know we did it. This this part is like kind of running a little bit long. It's kind of going to the place. So yeah, there's the metal box. Just use the wrench. Pretty simple, really, when you get down to it. Uh, but what do you think is in the box? A head. A head? <laughs> well, now that would be a twist, but no, it's it's a key because we gotta go to the historical society. Because that's what it says in the walkthrough. I mean, um, my, my thoughts in the that I wrote 
No. I did not look at a walkthrough. I no. swear to God, I, I did this blind. No one believes me. Also, it says right there. See, uh, I, 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 yeah. A head would have been more interesting, though. But how would he make you get into the historical society? It shrieks and shatters everything. <laughs> it breaks the door. It says the magic word. Yes. Yeah, okay. It's a haunted head. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, next time, the historical society, baby, yeah!